All right, welcome Chemistry 111 guys. We've got something really new for our alternate activity this week. I hope you like it. It is a chemistry video game. No, I'm just kidding. It is actually a really sophisticated uh, computational tool that will allow you to build digital models in virtual space and perform calculations to investigate all kinds of really important things like bond angles and uh, charges, electronegativity value, I mean all kinds of things, right? Uh, um, all kinds of really important things like energies of molecules, how they are arranged in three-dimensional space. I, I really enjoy this program, plus it is again sort of the coolest chemistry video game you're gonna find, but that's probably not saying a whole lot, so we're gonna dive right in. So, if you get to the computer, right, and this is really important, you have to, you have to, have to come to Hayes Hall to use the software. It is not in any other building on campus. You have to come to Hayes on the third floor, all the way down the hall, past the labs. You will find uh, the two rooms uh, that have the uh, computer labs down here in Hayes that have this software, Spartan 18. Now be careful because some computers still have the old Spartan 16. It will not work. So make sure you select and open up Spartan 18 and you have to be really careful here to follow the instructions that I give you or you're going to be a little frustrated. That's why I'm making this video because I am a visual learner. I, I work a lot better when I see things happen, I see see examples as opposed to have things written down. So I'm making this to hopefully help some of you um, get into this program and start knocking this assignment out really quickly. Okay, the thing here that you want to learn are some really basic functions. And once you understand these basic functions, you're off to the races. Once you get out of, out of being a noob, you, you'll, you'll be in good shape and you can really play this like a pro. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, so um, in your handout, you're probably looking at the get it, getting started area. So you've launched the program. Hopefully your screen looks a little bit like mine. It's kind of this blank canvas. Uh, your background may be green, um, but you can change it to whatever color you want. It's not a big deal. If you like to make your background a different color, you can go to options and colors and you can change the color whatever you like. So don't worry that yours may look green or some other color, blue, whatever. Um, it may not look exactly the same, but it does not matter. Um, I choose white because it lets me see the colors a little bit better um, and you know, just a personal preference, okay? So first thing we're gonna do is we're kind of explore the screen here. You've got, which, you know, you've got uh, some menu tabs up here at the top, like file, edit, model, geometry. These things are probably very similar to you, like in other Windows programs or Macintosh programs. You have a lot of options, and then you got these uh, these different icons up here. We'll explore them as we move along, but they're really important. Um, so what we're going to do first is kind of walk you through a really simple molecule, water, and and that's really easy. The first thing you want to do is you want to start a new molecule or a new model and the way you do that there are two options you have there's the the more structured way you go to file new build or if you're like me you can click this little icon right here for new build and you're off to the races once you click that the world is open to you to do whatever you want it's kind of like a molecular version of minecraft in a way so what you can do here is you have a palette and this palette is like you know an artist palette you instead of paint you have different atoms and different structural um, components and so you can build and select these different things um, and they show you up here in this gray tab which ones you have selected so right now I've got a carbon that has four bonds I can pick a hydrogen with one bond a fluorine with one bond an oxygen with double bond all kinds of really cool things there's even a silicon with four bonds here a bunch of different nitrogens and oxygens a phosphorus all kinds of fun things now for those of you that really enjoy chemistry, if you go on to take chemistry in the second year of your Wabash, or if you're a bio guy, maybe in your third, um, you can take organic chemistry and you'll deal with really organic focuses on these, these atomic fragments to build their molecules. Uh, next semester, if you continue on in chemistry, you'll take or or inorganic chemistry, and that one deals with a lot of the parts of the periodic table, so you can actually pick a lot of things from the periodic table, essentially the entire periodic table, within reason, uh, here you go, and all kinds of fun things. If you're interested in biology, you know, a lot of you guys are bio guys or pre-health guys, you can look at peptides, you can build your poly... Um, you know, your polypeptides, you can build proteins, you can build some uh, nucleotides, right? You can, you got your base pairs here and all kinds of fun things you can do. But we're gonna start pretty, pretty slowly, okay? So don't get too, too, uh, too worried. We're gonna work you through this. Okay, so back to the, the idea at hand. We're gonna start small and build water. 
it couldn't be easier. So you follow you along with me. We've clicked new, so we have this new palette. This canvas here is totally open to us, and we're going to select something from our palette. And if we want to build water, the instructions show you you want to pick the double the 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 oxygen here that has two bonds and not the double bonded one, I almost said that, but you want this one here, and you see this is the one that's shown in your handout, because that's the one that looks like the Lewis structure of water, right? Water has no double bonds, so you don't want this one, you want the one right here. And your handout says, second row, third column, so that's the one we want. Now, if we want to add this from the palette to our canvas, you just double left click, boom, boom, and there you go. Once you have this, uh, you can see very easily the oxygen is denoted as a red sphere. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and show you how you can play around with this. The first thing I want to do is it's kind of hard to see that for me anyway. It's a little small. So I'm going to roll my mouse wheel away from me and I can make it bigger. Or if I roll the mouse wheel towards me, I can make it smaller. Now you may not have a mouse wheel on your mouse. That's perfectly fine. If you don't uh, hold down the shift button, and hold down the right mouse button and slide your mouse up and down uh, away from you and towards you along the mouse pad and that will do the same function. This is in your handout so I'm not telling you anything that's not there. I'm just illustrating what's going on. The other thing you can do if you stop doing that, take your hands off the keyboard. If you hold down the left mouse button and move the mouse, you can rotate this molecule in space and that's really kind of cool. And then finally, the last thing you can do if you stop what you're doing, you can now hold down just the right mouse button and you can move this around and translate around the, the canvas here. So really easy, uh, in video games you would probably call this camera control, um, you know, this is our third person view of our molecule and there you go. Okay, now, this is just a simple oxygen atom, we need to add something to it to make water and the way we do that right is we go and we select um, some hydrogens and we're gonna select the hydrogens here they only have one bond as you know from class and we're gonna you see here this yellow stick is a bond that is not uh, completed so we're gonna click on the end of that bond boom we're gonna click on the end of this bond boom and now we have water and we can rotate that around we can move it around and we can zoom and, uh, un and unzoom. So really kind of a neat way to build molecules. So if you think about it, this is really not a whole lot different from uh, the, the gummy bears and toothpicks that you might have used before. And you can click on atoms and investigate them and we'll talk about that more. So the next thing I want to do is just kind of show you, you can get rid of the palette. Like, let's say we're done. We are done with water. We've made water. That's, that's done. So we don't need the palette anymore. So we can uh, click the glasses here. And if you click on the little glasses, that's the view icon. It'll make the palette go away. And now we can use uh, the whole canvas to look and focus and move and you know rotate and spin and do whatever we want to, dealing with just the molecule we have on the tablet here. Now we can go back, like if you realize, oh, let's say I made a mistake, you know, you can go back and you can click on the edit, which is the little nerd guy, a uh, little nerd guy with a molecule, so you can click on him and then your palette comes back. And let's say we made a mistake, you can click the eraser, the delete, and you can you can get rid of that guy and we could, you know, we could add a fluorine, uh, we don't want to do that, so we can get rid of that, and we put the hydrogen back, and there you go. And so now we can go back to view, which is really fun. Now the cool thing about view, I, what I think is really exciting about view is if we go over here to model this uh, menu, this drop down menu, you have a bunch of different ways you can visualize this molecule. We can hit wire, which is very simple, just a little wire structure, and this comes from the idea that historically they would build uh, bigger molecules with wire, metal wire, which was really kind of neat. Um, you can do the ball and the stick, and so here you have the a similar molecule but we made the bonds a little bit smaller to focus on the atoms right and then we can do a tube and so this mimics sort of the older old school molecular model kits that you might see on YouTube videos or in museums you can pick uh, the ball and spoke which is the one that's kind of my favorite uh, a lot of people call this the ball and stick model this is very common if you were to buy a physical molecular modeling kit that's what it looks like um, one of the ones that's most important is called space filling. Whoa, that zoomed out. Uh, now, what's neat about space filling is that space filling actually kind of shows you 
more about the three-dimensional um, you know space the molecule would occupy and so this actually takes the atomic radii or the covalent radii in some cases and really kind of shows you what is the electron cloud look like around this molecule um, really really important if you're gonna think about things docking into each other um, doing all it looks like it's kind of twerking there but anyway anyway um, so we look at the model here and you also have the line which is just the the, the letters here and all kinds of fun things so we're gonna go back to ball and stick which is my favorite and there you go right okay so that's water that's once you do that you're in good shape now there are a couple things I'd like to show you using some functions that you're gonna use in your um, in your um, uh, assignment and one of them is actually thinking about how do you make sure this is the most realistic or the lowest energy structure and the way you can do that is twofold um, you can do a couple things one you can go up here and there's a really important button that's called energy minimize and what that's going to do is it's going to do a very very simple uh, essentially a molecular mechanics level uh, calculation which is pretty low level and so if we click on that you'll see the the progress bar is lightning fast and it'll just kind of show you it's going to go and do um, basically a, a sort of a, a repulsion type thing where it's going to want to minimize the repulsion due to the electron clouds uh, you know get those bonding and those non-bonding pairs as far as possible uh, and get the equilibrium geometry but it's going to do it very very quickly and so you can do that to get a good estimate and that's always a good thing you want to do um, so so you can do that now the other thing you can do, if you if this one is not sufficient, and sometimes this, this very simple calculation will not be sufficient because it doesn't tell you all the things you want to know, um, you can go over here to setup and you can do a calculation that you can customize. And this is really important. So if you look at this, it gives you a bunch of options, which may seem a little scary at first, but you know, you're kind of tweaking the controls here, not unlike a video game, you know, where you control all of your you map out of your controls, you want to get this just right. And so what you can do is you can say, okay, well, I want the equilibrium geometry. I want the lowest energy, um, you know, version of the molecule, confirmation of the molecule. I want the ground state, right, the lowest energy of the electronic state. And then I can choose my, my state of matter and gas is the one that's easiest to calculate. Why is that? It's because you don't have to worry about the interactions, right, between the molecules. That, that makes things a lot harder. So we're going to keep these the same. And later on in your lab, uh, act, or sorry, in your alternate activity, it's going to tell you to change something really important. So this is what you want to look at here when it gets to that point. You can choose a bunch of different types, and so molecular mechanics. That if we were to pick that, it'd be kind of a waste of time because that's essentially the same thing the in, in an energy minimize button does. So you don't pick that one. Semi empirical is the next step up. It's more accurate. Takes a little bit more time. Um, Hartree Falk is the one that I think is really good because it gives it's a good trade-off of precision and accuracy um, versus time, right? You have to remember these are calculations, right? These are simulations. Uh, this is not truth, right? This is a simulation. So we have to remember these are mathematical projections of a molecule, right? And so Hartree Falk is a really good one in that it gives you a higher level of precision, but remember every time you want better accuracy better precision it takes you more time computationally so you're gonna make the computer work a lot harder because it's trying to solve approximations of essentially the Schrodinger equation right and so um, that's a lot of horsepower and you guys are spoiled because you have really fast computers even the little ones that you're probably working with right now so if you keep going you can go to density functional which is the next step up and that's a really a uh, high-level calculation that's pretty much I would argue sort of the standard right now for low-level research um, and then you can keep going higher and higher and higher um, the idea though is that we want to find a good balance right we'd like to be able to do a calculation that doesn't take you days because I promise you you don't want to sit there for an hour waiting for your computer to do the calculation and so what we're gonna do is use Hartree Falk so I'm gonna select that and if you wish to know more about Hartree Falk you can I believe yeah you can slide on it and read a little bit more about it and these are really cool uh, I mean if you want to read about molecular mechanics you can read that all kinds of fun things again we're not gonna quiz you on these things but make sure you know how to select which one you need 
and the uh, the the levels of the basis sets that you use can be varied so make sure you pick the right one that your activity tells you to choose and right now I think for my first calculation I'm gonna choose this one and it tells you a little bit about that in case you're curious and these little check boxes don't worry about it right now but there is something you want to check and it's not gonna come into play today but I'm gonna tell you about it anyway uh, you know sometimes you may want to uh, calculate ions and they will have a charge and so you have to make sure to pick that and tell Spartan what you have and then sometimes you may have uh, electrons that don't have a pair so we're not going to worry about that today but there are lots and lots of options the key thing here is that you need to make sure that when you wish Spartan to do your calculation number one you double check all your parameters make sure they match what your activity asks for that's really important and then the next thing you want to do is do not hit OK because that won't actually run the calculation you want to hit submit and you see the little jogger there that means run the darn calculation so we're gonna hit that boom and it's gonna ask you for a, a file uh, it's gonna save this for you and I'm not too worried about where you save it but save it somewhere where you can find it um, either onto your cloud or I'm just gonna save it to the desktop that's perfectly fine for right now hit save and boom that calculation is gonna start and I'm gonna hit OK it's just a status box don't worry about that and you gotta be patient, just wait. You know, you, oh, boom, Spartan's fast. And so that harsh refock calculation is a very powerful uh, calculation in my opinion, but it's darn quick. And so we'll say, okay, you're done. And you'll see sometimes it spins your molecule around because it was moving things around as it did the calculation. And so now we can take the results of that calculation and we can investigate the molecule, the actual computed molecule, the simulation of the molecule based on the type of calculation that we did. And so if we had more time, you could actually calculate this and compare it to the actual true value, which would be the actual experimental value. If we go and measure the, the molecule in real life using instruments, we can see how good our simulation is based um, on comparison to the actual true value and we can get better and better calculations because the whole idea is that you want to take these models and you want them to be as accurate and precise when compared to uh, the real world experimental values because then you can have more confidence um, in COVID uh, you've heard a lot about models right and the the thing that I always hear Dr. Fauci say on TV is that all models are wrong but some are useful and I would argue that Spartan is not going to give you truth uh, it's going to give you a model and if that model is a good model it can be very useful so models are not reality they are simulations but they can you know if we get them really well refined they can be very close to the true values in nature and that makes models really useful but they're not perfect they're not perfect okay so one thing we're going to look at here is we're going to try to find what is this bond angle. I want to know the structure of this molecule. I'm going to look at the bond angle. In order to do that, you go over here to these little golden orbs, and you're going to click the one with the question mark on angle. And we're going to go click a hydrogen. I'm going to click an oxygen. And I'm going to click a hydrogen. And then down here, you're going to see the bond angle. And it's always important if we want this bond, right? We want that bond angle. You want to make sure if you want this bond, you click this middle atom second, right? Because that's really important. And it's confirmed down here where it shows you it's the angle made from this guy, this guy, and this guy. Or this gal, this gal, and this gal. I don't mean to ascribe gender to atoms, right? That's never a good thing. Okay, so there you go. You can do that. Uh, you can do all kinds of fun things like that. The other thing you can do, this is not part of your activity, but you can find the bond distance. So if we want to find the oxygen-hydrogen distance, the distance between these two atoms, we can find that too, and this is 0.947 angstrom. So that's kind of a neat thing you can do. The other thing that you're going to probably do in this activity is you're going to investigate the individual atoms and their their um, they're basically the, how the electrons are distributed and so we can right click again right click on this one and we can look at the properties and so you can see here you can see the charges and these will th be things that you want to report later on and you can click on the different atoms once you have that box open or if you close it you can go over here and right click it again and look at the properties that's really useful the other thing that's really important that you'll need to do is we want to look at the actual the actual energy of this thing and so if we want to find the energy of this molecule we need to go to display and we need to go to output and sometimes there's a delay so let it do its thing don't be on there we go it popped up and you can actually see the 
the energy of this molecule as calculated by this simulation. And you can actually look up a whole bunch of other things if you're curious. You don't have to do it right now. Uh, but here you're getting the energy, and the sign here is important, right? We know in energy, negative and positive have very specific meanings. And so this is a, a you know, fairly uh, stable structure here because, again, Spartan wants to find the lowest energy structure. And here we have negative 76. And I usually, this is absurd number of sig figs. Don't, don't let that freak you out. Uh, that's probably something the programmer should work on. You know, I would take off points if they weren't careful with their sig figs, and they clearly weren't. However, I would probably um, cut this off at about the hundreds place because anything past that can't be, or at least my estimation, it's probably not very significant. So um, I would probably cut that off at the hundreds place. And again, it kind of reminds us how we did our calculation and what the molecule is, and, and there you go. So just using those techniques, I think that gives you all of the um, skills you need to work on this. Now, there's one more thing I will show you, just because I think it's a little bit confusing. Whenever you get done with a molecule and you're going to move on to another molecule, if you don't close it out, they will begin sometimes to stack and they can get messy. So I would urge you, and you don't have to do it, it's your world, I just teach in it, but I would probably close this and by doing that I mean go to file and hit close and you know sure you can change your save your changes and then you get a blank canvas and that's really important I think. Now granted your file is still saved on the desktop so you can always open it back up however when you move to another molecule it's good to start with a blank canvas and I do want to show you one example of one that may cause you a little bit of confusion later on and that's in part um, part B I believe where you're gonna deal with the trigonal bipyramidal structure and so if we look at that I'm gonna start a new molecule and here in, in part B you're gonna to have to be a little bit more savvy there's nothing here in the organic palette that's gonna help you make the molecule the SF4 so you have to bump over here to the inorganic and you're dealing with sulfur so make sure you select sulfur right so if you look sulfur is over here in the periodic table and then you want the trigonal bipyramidal structure so you gotta make sure to collect, click that and then double click over here on the canvas to add it so then you see yellow is for sulfur kinda of cool and then you say I think the lab the activity excuse me tells you you need to find fluorine and fluorine is actually you could pick it here right you could go to sulfur change it to fluorine and put a single bond but that's too much work for me I'm just gonna go ahead and bounce over here to the organic palette and it's one of my options so you can click on that and I'm gonna say in this first case I think you want to put um, you know four here and then you want to put the lone pair in this equatorial position and I'll let you remember what equatorial means and axial means right axial um, would be what the two that are 180 degrees apart in the equatorial are going to be the ones like around the equator right would be the ones that are 120 degrees apart relative to each other and so remember this is SF4 so you might be confused what happens here well if you forget to get rid of this extra bond it will add a hydrogen in fact I'll just show you I'm gonna go ahead and hit that minimize button right up here right and oops that's the wrong structure I don't want anything to deal with that I don't want that at all so what I'm gonna do instead is click the little delete button and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make sure I select it oh it's up there we go hmm okay there we go and then I'm gonna click this guy and look there you go I got rid of it so now when I hit my energy minimize I don't have a hydrogen and that's really important and so that's how you build this guy which looks like a little seesaw kind of structure right and so um, then you can do your calculations and you'll, you'll be on your way so that's a really short um, introduction to um, the really essential skill set you need to be a good Spartan player um, you know this will get you um, into the high levels you know it won't, probably won't get you streaming on Twitch anytime soon with your own Patreon, but uh, you know it'll get you started for what you need here. So congratulations, you're not a noob anymore. You can get this, you can get this going. So I hope this helps you. Um, again, like I said, for me it helps seeing someone use the program. So feel free to go back in the video and use what is helpful as you move on through your um, activity. And I hope this helps. So uh, enjoy your use of Spartan. I think it's a great tool. 
It's something that's really fun later on. If you don't have a model kit, you can always jump into Spartan and kind of build molecules. And to be honest, I think it's a lot of fun. If you want to build some proteins and fun things like that or all kinds of cool structures, Spartan's a lot of fun. So I hope it's helpful for you in your learning, and I hope it's helpful as you work on your alternate assignment for this week. So good luck and uh, happy playing.